Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Evangelist, and the Cyber Geeks Alliance lifted their bridge and found a troll beneath it. So I'm gonna review it. This is Unique Toys 001 Troll, where the O stands for Ordin, the abominastic combiner they're working on whose name font always, always looks like the word groin to me at a glance. Thanks to Pia for making this Photoshop and, uh, supporting my delusions. While Troll is only one of many definitions for Generation 1 Blot's alt mode, this unofficial take on the character leans into it pretty hardcore. His head is far more defined, jutting out less like a nose and more like a stunted Godzilla guana. Also adding a trollish touch is the clearly defined loincloth armor in front of Troll Mode Troll's empty crotch. However, everything else is blot referential to a T. The overall silhouette is there with the long forearms puffed up a few decimals on the Popeye scale, and those three clawed troll hands look sharp and mean. His little two-toed legs are capable of way more personality than you might expect, but we'll talk about posability more in a second. First, I've got to comment on the color scheme. The light purple is a bit more pale than I'd have liked, but it looks lovely next to that properly deep dark blue that may also be purple. The use of gray on the chest is new, but serves to break up the picture of this guy in a way that I don't mind. Paintwork is pretty damn good, particularly when it's red or purple ink going on over top of the dark blurple plastic. His eyes properly pop, and nothing feels streaky or too thin. Troll's weapons can mount on his bestial body in a number of ways, but my favorite thing to do is to make a little gun emplacement and stick it over his shoulders. This calls back to the original Blot's alt mode weaponry, offers the option of firing some imaginary missile spam if you pull the cover back, and covers up the open combiner port up top. Kinda. This square hole does not bug me very much, but it's clearly gotten a lot of hackles raised in the commentary of just TFW's discussion thread alone. Personally, I find that it blends in with all the dark colors surrounding it, but be aware that it's there. You know, don't lose your finger down it or anything, or drop food in there, you're never getting it back. So when you tell me something is gonna try to look like G1 Blot in its alt mode, in its nose monster troll thing mode, I mean, like, the last thing I expect is posability. This guy tries to be posable in this mode in some really interesting ways. First up, his shoulders, which are dedicated shoulders for this mode. They've got a forward and backwards rotation, they've got an inwards and outwards rotation, and a lot of it's all, like, the forward and backward rotation is based, like, somewhere inside this left side of the, the shell of this shoulder. What that means is often the forward and backward rotation is a little bit angled, because usually this guy's shoulders are angled outwards just a touch. Also, they can go uh, a little bit inwards, uh, just a little bit outwards, uh, everything's a touch limited, but it's like a happy little sphere of just enough movement to feel good for something that looks like this. Now his elbows are kind of limited. Uh, when they're straight, they're like that. When they're bent, they're about that. Like, that's it. However, if you don't care about what the front looks like, and you just go like blap and then blap, this looks a lot uglier, but now his elbows bend a whole lot more. And, uh, I don't know, I kind of like the option. Uh, I, I wish that this was just baked in to the side that has a nice happy panel in front, but whatevs, uh, these hands are fun, these arms are fun, these hands I'll talk about in a second, these forearms though, I love how they look. His wrists, as you saw, can swivel, and this dude's, like, troll hands are, uh, there's a thumb and two digits, they're ball jointed, and there's a pretty decent range on these, uh, not just in terms of gripping, but also in terms of just that little touch of splay to make him look dynamic and like he's reaching for your candy. Uh, his head, unfortunately, doesn't really do anything. It can look down a little, but as it does, it sinks into his chest and it's, it's just embarrassing, you know? Like, he, now he just looks like he's he's done something wrong and he feels real bad about it. Uh, I wish there was some way for his head to look left and right, but I cannot see how that would be doable with the current setup of how his engineering works. There's no waist joint because, like, this skirt's covering, like, a massive void under here. However, his hips are on surprisingly well-ranged ball joints. The ball socket joint is actually, like, in here. And, uh, this bit... You can see that bit coming in there. This extends out for this mode to give it a much bigger range of motion than I expected off of this design. Also, this knee... Tightest ratchet on the whole toy. Because these knees have to hold up this big bulk and still look all skinny. That's clever. And, uh, aside from, like, you know, tilting his foot forward and backwards, the final bit of cleverness is that the foot can tilt. This dude has an ankle tilt in the mode that a lot of people very mistakenly don't care about. 
Um, the, the amount of love put into trying to just cram posability into this dude's monster mode makes me real happy. This is the thing I love the most. If we get his legs all straightened out here and then tilt his feet like this way a little bit, uh, thanks to the range of the ball socket joint, you can get this guy to have a bit of a dynamic silhouette to his stance where his legs are... You know, toes are pointed a little bit out, and his legs are both pointed a little bit inwards. Um, let's see if I can get a light down here to showcase what I mean. Like, you see this? Like, he's, he looks like an actual, like, living thing, not like a block with limbs that serves as an alt mode. Like, what I think most people expect out of something that's trying to look like G1 Blot. So, well done, Unique Toys. You made this mode do stuff. Uh, but that's about it for this mode, so let's get on with some Henkei. Henshin Torrantsu Formu. Groin shifting. What one would expect to be a terribly simple transformation almost aggressively goes out of its way to be creative, even in the simple task of unfolding Troll's robot legs. The Troll mode's backpack and legs spray out, exploding and sucking back together in a process that's not so much complicated as it is needing a surprising radius in which to take place. But hey, everything eventually tabs and pegs together solidly before the Troll skirt practically disappears into this guy's waistline. The main event are the troll mode arms, which spectacularly reform into both a backpack and the robot mode arms. This is such a clever design, particularly in how uncomplicated the mechanisms are to invoke. It's very satisfying and easily one of the figure's biggest standalone draws. More on that later. Troll's upper body reshapes and inhales the alt mode head, finishing things off with nearly every major piece having moved around and locked back in tightly. Basically, Troll goes from a squat and monstrous thing to a fairly nondescript robotic biped wearing a moderate backpack. I am really impressed by how much mass shifts and reshapes between both modes. As a humanoid, Troll sculpt carries on his somewhat geometric but not overly obnoxious surface detailing. His only major fault are the super obvious hollow spaces in his lower legs, something I'd really like to have seen covered up by his curled Troll mode legs. I like the rejiggered color palette using the gray and light purple to clearly segment his body up in an interesting way, and his head sculpt is roxomely brutal. Aside from looking highly Transformersly on topic, his mouth is in the right kind of expression, complete with teeny and crisply molded fangs. Looking at Troll's weaponry in more detail, there are a pair of mirror-sculpted cannons and that big chunky thingamy with the missile pod panel hidden inside. They all use 5mm peg and port connections, but unfortunately many of the peg holes on Troll seem to be a few micrometers too wide. The missile pod chunk has got some peg holes that fold out into pegs, but generally the holes on the backpack and inside Troll's palms are the ones to turn to. It's a bummer, but at least it's just simple friction connections that can be tweaked if you decide to get in there with some thickening agents. I can make you a solemn guarantee that this guy in robot mode is at least as poseable as he was in Troll mode. And I friggin' hope so. Anyway, his head is on a ball joint, and it's got a nice amount of wiggle so he can really just get all his trash talking on and throw up the 316 or something something. His shoulders do this and this as well as this, a double jointed one of these, and a little bit of that too. Also, if you ever give him a huge gun for some reason, I don't know why you'd do that to a guy who has all this on his back. Uh, you can do that, so you can hold guns easier. Or, you know, just break his wrist punching a wall. You're like, why did I hurt myself? Ah, oh, get me a cup of tea! His waist can swivel. His hips have got a ratchet in them, a really soft ratchet, and I only know it's there because I had to open up his hips to do something. Well, open up his pelvis to do something, and then, like, a ratchet piece fell out, because I'm an ace modeler. Uh, this is not ratcheted, though. In fact, I think this is really the only major ratcheting joint in his robot mode, and it's a super soft, buttery, like, silent, mute, all tactile texture kind of ratchet. His knees do that, and they can swivel right above that, too. If you want, he can use his transformation joint to, to put another knee bend in, but I don't really think it's necessary. Uh, his ankles can tilt in that the foot can do that. Uh, there's nothing actually under here, but uh, the one small upside is that these heel things are pretty tight, so if you're going to put this guy into a pose that might take him off his usual center of uh, stability down here on the floor, then you can also go like, put this down, alright, now he's got like a little stilt back there 
to hold him up and keep him from tipping over. So uh, this dude's posability is pretty good. I mean, he, it's a very solid, strong, basic suite of bipedal robot posability. This guy's also hiding the secret. Uh, and I, you might notice I've got these things, you know, on his back and the, the fingers all arranged in what we in the business call the PAW configuration. Uh, I modified it, of course. I call this the angular PAW um, or the, I guess you could call it the vulvic PAW because uh, it looks like the letter V. Uh, and, and I love volcanoes. But if you uh, want to access the lovely secret of Groin Troll, uh, the, the thing that makes this guy really win me over hardcore, uh, it's that the engineering of this dude allows for this, and this had to be intentional. Uh, this guy can deploy the ultimate weapon from his backpack, which is to kind of just, like, regress the transformation of one of his arms in all kinds of the most wonderful ways and you could do this with both but I love doing this with just one of them and you know leave this part up so you get maximum posability now this dude has a friggin like violence hand and uh, and I, I love this like look at this this guy's all like oh hey we you started a fight now I'm gonna have to rip your face off and stuff it in your kidney in a way that you're gonna thank me for give me your candy I just love the look of this guy just transforming one of his arms into a friggin like blender finger murder machine and uh, with this you can you can do the best version of this oft overused pose he's not just gonna punch the ground Iron Man style he is going to masticate the ground with his troll fingers Iron Man style boom I did not balance that very well I fixed it so this dude is fun and here, look, oh, no, I don't like that exposed stuff there. I fixed it. I hope you're happy. Uh, now he can't bend his elbow as much. You know what? I wasn't going to do this, but why not? Let's do this. Let's see. Ultimate test. Let's see if you can survive this and not ruin all the footage I have yet to shoot for this video that everyone's already seen. I guess they all already know. Okay, that wasn't a very good throw. Uh, let's get to a higher angle. You're supposed to fall down when I throw you back there. All right, how are you? Looking good? Still looking good? Still looking good? All right. Well, uh, I guess at this point I should mention this dude in troll mode also at one point like pitched backwards off a table and went clattering to the floor in the kind of way that makes you go, <gasps> and he seems to have come out of that fine. So, uh, yeah. There isn't much to say about Troll's combiner prospects as of this recording, but I did want to mention how solid a leg he turns into. Basically, starting from his troll mode, but with his legs in robot mode position, a flip-out groinal T-peg and a few other connections turn Troll into a super rigid shin that definitely will not bend or crumple regardless of how much weight he ends up bearing. The weapons also cleverly combine into the gestalt foot. Only bummer here is that the troll mode arms don't clip in satisfyingly, but they do sit rather well and don't flop around. I just wish they locked into the back of his legs to make this thing like a real solid chunk. And, uh, hey look, there's a teaser ankle tilt. Woo! I don't know how the unofficial Abominus Wars are going to play out as of late September 2014, but Troll does a whole lot to be a really fun standalone blot analog, without any of his engineering or parts count feeling exclusive to a potential combined form. Like, the only moving pieces that contribute nothing to him on his own are the groinal T-peg and the Gestalt ankle connector piece. Everything else serves Troll as a single figure, and serves him pretty well. And man, how far has Unique Toys come? I know I'm joining a small but vocal choir here, but I can't believe this toy is coming from the same group that made Warlord and the Sharkies. Hell, Troll feels like a notable step up from Salmor, and he just came out like, what, a month or two ago? This is a solid, parts tabbed together, joints move smoothly, hefty ball of transforming robot. My only major faults with him are his unevenly crafted 5mm peg holes, and the obvious hollowness of his lower robot legs, and I guess his forearms? All of these high marks do come at an unfortunate price, though, as Troll costs about five bucks more than Salmor, putting him just over the $100 mark at many retailers. Thing is, he's definitely on par with Salmor, if not a bit taller and way more solid in build quality. I can kind of see and feel what the money's paying for in the context of Unique Toys' release catalog. 
Troll is a playable, fun, imaginative, and satisfying piece of unofficial Transformers toyology, and if there were some way to get his cost down to 85 bucks or even less, he'd be an easy recommendation as a standalone figure. He is definitely something you should get some hands-on time with if you can. It's just unfortunate that he's at such a hard sell price. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Vangelis, and I remain agog at how much Unique Toys has improved over the last couple years. Troll is an accomplishment, and if the other members of Groin, uh, Orden, hit the same keynotes, Unique Toys may yet survive the ever-crowding unofficial Transformers marketplace. They just gotta stay scrappy.